Dragons. I'm Mr. Salerno, and this is Flame, and it's our good buddy Alphonse. Alphonse, you're here! We're so glad you made it on the show, and we want to welcome you to the News of Camelot. Today's Friday, October 14th, 2022. It's been a great week, right, Flame? We've had a lot of fun, right, Alphonse? Before we get going on our last show of the week, Dragons, let's hear what Meta has to say. Take it away, Meta. I pledge to the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Please stand for the moment of silence. Excellent work, Mado. We're so glad you led us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the moment of silence. Flame, the sun is going to rise today at 7.18 in the morning. And Alphonse, the sun is going to set this evening at 6.32. 6.32 in the evening, dragons. A little less sunlight each day. But that's okay, dragons, because we have each other. And we've gone through a lot of time together, about seven weeks, with school. And we've gone through some Positivity Project character traits. And you might remember, that's right, Flame. When we had Lila on the show on Tuesday, we asked Lila, we said, do you remember any of the Positivity Project character traits that we have reviewed so far this year? Right? Do you know how many there are, Alphonse? That, yeah, it is a tricky question. That's right. We have done five. We've done five traits and one pillar. So let's review the pillar. The pillar that we've done already is being present and giving others your full attention, just like you are right now. You're present, you're facing forward, you're giving everybody their space, and you are giving your attention to others. And there are five traits that we have gone through. So that's, you know what, that's why you wrote that on here. That's a good point. Dragons, let's take a little quiz. So here are some clues. There are five. We've done five Positivity Project character traits already this year. Let's take 60 seconds to see if you can remember what those six traits are. Here are the first letters in all of them. See if you can remember. Go ahead, 60 seconds. All right, here we go, dragons. Ready? The first one we did, the letter C, that is curiosity. And Lila said that one. It was a good job by Lila. We did curiosity as the first trait to start the new, year, the new year. And that just means that you might have some questions. You might wonder why something is the way it is, right? That's why we have Wednesday wonderings, so that you can have those different ideas going around in your head and you may be expressing them. That's a good job by you. C for curiosity. What about this one, dragons? That is F. We just did this one. That is for forgiveness. That's for forgiveness. That's pretty neat. And you know what? Let's do that, Alphonse. Let's take a look at this clip. Look at this clip, dragons, from Oprah Winfrey on forgiveness. That is aha. That's an aha moment. I always love those moments on the Oprah show when somebody said something that made us look at life in a completely new way. Well, the little hairs on my head rose when you said that, so I know you that was a bing, bing, aha moment. There are little bing, bing, bingers going on yeah. right now. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Anybody binging? 
After 25 years and more than 30,000 guests, that's talking to a lot of people, it was one man's definition of forgiveness that changed my life. Gerald, you mentioned that the secret to really finding true happiness is forgiveness. What do you mean by that? It really means letting go of the past. It really means letting go of our perception that we need to hold a grievance the rest of our lives. That, that if we really want to hold on to grievances, we'll never really be happy. It's really a willingness to, to see the person in the light of love rather than in the action that happened. So it's really changing the perception. And it really means letting go of the past that we thought we wanted. You know, we can't really change that past. So it means really l releasing the negative perception of it and coming back to the present. That was a transcendent moment for me. Bigger even than an aha. He said, forgiveness is giving up the hope that the past could be any different. I think for myself, and I know many of you, you think forgiving means accepting what has happened to you. Well, it is accepting that it has happened to you. Not accepting that it was okay for it to happen. It is accepting that it has happened, and now what do I do about it? Forgiving is giving up the hope, not holding on, hoping, wishing, that it could have been any other way than it actually was. Giving up the hope that the past could be any different. And when I got that, I think it took me to the next level of being a better person because I don't hold grudges for anything or any situation and neither should you. It's letting go so that the past does not hold you prisoner. And we know Oprah is a very powerful figure. Oprah has a lot of influence on making others better. She sees the goodness and she is the goodness each and every day. We appreciate that interview and we appreciate what Oprah has done for all of us and letting go of the past and making sure that you can accept others for who they are, that is very powerful stuff. What about this one, Dragons? The letter O. O. Okay, so that's a, yeah, that's a big one. That's open-mindedness. And that means that it's kind of, it goes in balance with the next one, but that means that you're willing to keep your mind open and not be so rigid. You're flexible. And then the letter P, P is for, good, Alphonse. P is for perspective. Isn't that neat? So open-mindedness and perspective are kind of the same. And perspective means that you consider someone else's point of view. It's not just about you and what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, oh, that's what you're thinking. Oh, I understand now. Look at this, Dragons. This is great. Not only can you have perspective mentally, but you can have perspective in where you're actually on a field or where you are in the classroom. Take a listen. Perspective taking is a valuable skill in many aspects of life and leadership. When we talk about perspective taking, we're referring to the process through which one is able to see a situation from the viewpoint of another, understanding their feelings, intentions, thoughts, or view of a particular situation. It doesn't mean we have to agree with their point of view. However, there is understanding and empathy. One of the things that is clear is that we all have our own perspective or way of seeing the world. For example, consider this image. What do you see? Please write down what you see in this image. Did some of you see a rabbit? Did some of you see a duck? Why do you think that is? This exercise demonstrates that even when presented with the same scenario, or in this case, image, we may see things differently. From one person's perspective, it may be a rabbit, and for another, a duck. Some may see something entirely different. It all depends on your perspective. Many aspects of life influence our perspective, such as our experiences, values, personality traits, information available, personal biases, and more. One's viewpoint can also change depending on your physical position or in the role you play. For example, 
not everyone on a football field has the same view. Your perspective can vary drastically depending on your place on the field and position, such as quarterback, O-lineman, or free safety. Sometimes, to understand others and to see from others' perspectives, we must reposition ourselves, both physically and mentally. When we acknowledge that there are many ways to see the world, we quickly see why perspective taking is valuable. So let's review really quickly, ready? C, curiosity, right? The letter F, forgiveness. O, open-mindedness. P, perspective. And then we have one more. And it's what we're all about here at Camelot, right? Not only seeing the goodness, but being the goodness. And teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, dragons. That was our trade that we did just after curiosity. We're together in this, dragons. It's gonna be a great school year. There might be moments when we think we can do it all ourselves, and that might be true, but there's nothing more powerful than looking out for each other and working together because there are all kinds of dangers out there. There are all kinds of distractions or things that might get in our way, but we need each other, dragons. Look at this video. And oh, that, that was a friend of flame last week. Oh, okay, good one, Alphonse. That has having good perspective. Look at this video, dragons, of ducks working together to avoid danger. The bobcat, named for a short bob tail, isn't built for deep snow. Small paws don't support the cat's weight, and he sinks into the drifts. The stealthy hunter becomes slow, inefficient. Bobcats usually avoid the snowiest regions of Yellowstone when winter arrives. But this cat may have been lured by an unusual opportunity, open water. An oasis in a frozen world. It becomes a refuge for waterfowl, who in turn attract the bobcat. Bobcats are not by habit creatures of the water. They're elusive hunters, rarely seen. But the hungry cat must try his luck here, in the open. The bobcat moves towards what must be a tempting sight. Mallard ducks within striking distance. The cat's bold approach should concern the ducks, but they don't panic. With a quick paddle, they're easily out of range. The bobcat is left with a puzzle. He'll try a different strategy. and wait. Let the ducks come to him. But an unexpected target services. A muskrat. Blissfully unaware of the unlikely stalker. Full of river muck 
is no prize. That makes sense, right, dragons? There are dangers out there. There are things that might get in our way. But if we stick together and we stay calm and we value each other for what they're worth, great things can happen. We avoid anything that gets in our way and we can do great things afterwards. So dragons, we've done five. We've got 19 more. It's going to carry us all through the school year and four more pillars. We, we know that they're in all of us and this will all help us see the goodness and be the goodness in each of our dragons. So keep it up. Da -da -da! It's time for the birthday box. Birthday box on a weekend. That is the best. That is so great. So let's see here. We have, let's do today. We always do Fridays on Fridays. And then Alphonse will do Saturday birthdays. So let's see what this says. Today is October 14th. Ivy Nguyen. Ivy, happy birthday in second grade. That is so great. So now tomorrow on Saturday, October 15th, Kanishk Chimwal. Oh, happy birthday to you, Kanishk in second grade. <gasps> Raquel, Raquel Artuna Valderrama in fourth grade. That's wonderful. Happy birthday, Raquel. Bradley Shoop, Shoopaloop. Happy birthday in first grade. Way to go, Bradley. Raj Smith. Yes, happy birthday, Raj in second grade. Bao Vo. Bao, welcome to Camelot. Happy birthday to you in sixth grade. That is excellent news. And Miss Botang. Miss Botang's birthday. All right, Miss Botang is everywhere at once. She's helping kids every minute of the day. Happy birthday to you, Miss Botang. Isn't that neat, Flynn? Okay, yes, yes, focus. The mail. Yes, the mail. Let me check back here for some mail. And that's, you know what, dragons? There have been a lot of submissions right, for Closing Circle, and a lot of submissions of appreciation. And you have been really doing an excellent job appreciating and seeing the goodness in others. That is excellent news. So we pulled a bunch that have the letter A, and this will help with our Closing Circle later today. So that's going to read a few. I'm going to read a few right here for you. Ready? Daisy in second grade says that she wants to give a tasty fish to Seddon because she shows kindness. That's very nice. Seddon, in third grade, wants to give us tasty fish to Holly because she is funny and kind. And Hussein, in second grade, wants to give a tasty fish to Maxwell because he is kind to me. That's just three examples right there of dragons seeing the goodness in others. And Alyssa to Raquel. Hey, she is nice and she never leaves me behind. Oh, even drew a little smile. Oh, Alyssa. Good job. Alexa in fourth grade wants to give a tasty fish to Hannah because she is also very kind. Usman in fourth grade wants to give a tasty fish to Nora because one time when he hurt his eye, she gave Usman an ice pack. Yes, that's what it's about. Angelique in fourth grade wants to give one to Taryn. She makes me laugh a lot and she is a good friend. She is very kind. Nice job. Rockatuba wants to give a tasty fish to Deniman because he helps me when I need it. Good job, Ronka, and good job, Deniman. Marin in fourth grade oh, wants to give a tasty fish to Ella because she is kind and she includes others. That is very well said. Nice. Camilla in fifth grade wants to give a tasty fish to Sori. She's the best person I could ask for. That, that's Sori Cooper. Ah, the best person. Leo in fifth grade wants to give a tasty fish to Tobis because he always makes time to play with Leo at recess. Yay, way to go, Tobis. David wants to give a tasty fish to Mason because he is also very kind. Good job, David. Nia Olivia in sixth grade wants to give a tasty fish to her sixth grade teachers because we have so much to learn and I appreciate how they challenge us. Nia Olivia. Very thoughtful, very insightful. Thomas in sixth grade wants to give a tasty fish to Ethan because he is nice not only to Thomas but to everyone. Very cool, Ethan. Sarah in fourth grade wants to give a tasty fish to Hannah because she is nice to her every day. And then one more, one more from Sadie. Sadie in fifth grade wants to give a tasty fish to Morgan because she is super kind. And on this one, bonus from Sadie, there's a joke on the bottom. 
Here's a joke, dragons. Ready? Why was the road mad? Well, I mean, there are a lot of reasons roads can be mad. What do you think, Alphonse? Why was the road mad? Because the chicken crossed it. <laughs> yeah, don't cross me out, that chicken. That's not the nicest. Okay, so here we go. Ready? More mail. More mail here. Oh, this dear, there's a note on this. Look at this, dear flame. I saw this and wanted to color it in for you. You did a friend of flame of teamwork where the plover bird was helping the crocodile. I saw this and thought of you. Oh, that is the greatest from Valerie S. Look at that, dragons. Working together, remembering, storing that knowledge away, the plover bird helping the crocodile, and both are happy. The crocodile gets a teeth cleaning, and the plover bird gets a meal. Valerie. Oh, that is the... That might have to get hung up. That is... That's neat stuff. All right, dear flame, I want to give a tasty fish to Kevin and Mrs. Choi because Kevin is a good friend, and Mrs. Choi always is kind and nice. She sees the goodness and is being the goodness from Micah. Micah, you are the most thoughtful. That is, that's fun. That's just fun stuff when you not only see the goodness in kids, but adults as well. What, oh, Alphonse, I missed one. Oh, geez, I missed one. Dragons, dragons, if it's Slogurt and it's Gogurt, that must be from Miss Flaherty. But I noticed this doesn't say Slogurt. This says SpongeBob SquarePants. Go, Gert. Well, let's see what this says here. Dear Flame, I hope you enjoy this new postcard I found. Uh, we are enjoying it. Speaking of enjoying something, please let all the dragons know how much I've enjoyed their kindness toward one another. Let them know being the goodness can happen anytime, anywhere. And when we see the goodness, we recognize the value in others and make our class and school a better place. Keep up your great work, dragons. Lots of love, Miss Flaherty. Oh, Miss Flaherty. And that is an excellent point, Miss Flaherty. That's an excellent point. When we are the goodness and we see an opportunity to be the goodness each and every day, we make our school a better place. And it's in all of us. It's in all of us to be kind to one another, to not worrying about who's first in line, to not worry about fastest or has the prettiest crayon. None of that matters. What matters is what's inside of you and that you recognize that every one of us has goodness. Just like Miss Flaherty said, we're, we don't have a Spongebob Gogur. We might have to put that right there and add to our collection from Miss Flaherty. That's really neat stuff that you Miss Flaherty. So, on behalf of Plain and on behalf of Alphonse, I'm Mr. Slerno. Enjoy the start to your weekend, dragons. See the goodness. Be the goodness. Can't wait to see you next week. Thanks, everyone.